Do you want to know how to texture anything in Blender? I've been texturing all my game assets in Blender for a few years now, and honestly, it was very hard at first. But then, I discovered this amazing free add-on, which made texturing the easiest thing ever. So, make sure to watch till the end, so you don't waste time making the same mistakes I did. Also, I want to thank you all for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers. As a token of appreciation, I've got a little gift for you at the end of the video. Stay tuned. Now, the add-on is called Yuka Paint, and this is why you have to use it. It's free. It gives you full control over each layer's properties, making texturing faster and easier. For example, let's take this boring sword from the last video and turn it into something beautiful. First, open Blender and move to UV Editing. Select All, press U, and choose Smart UV Project with a low margin. If there's still space, scale up parts of the UV, then move back to the Layout tab. Before you start, install Yuka Paint by going to Edit, Preferences, and click Install to locate the Yuka Paint file you downloaded. Mine is already installed. Now switch to Texture Painting, press N, and select Yuka Paint. Click the Setup button for a quick start. If you have a reference image, switch to the Image Editor panel and open your reference. To hide the UV, click View and uncheck the option. Click the plus button and add a solid color layer. Name it whatever you want. Use the color picker to grab the color from your reference or choose one from your imagination. This will be the base color of the entire object. You can always adjust these values later to suit your taste. If your reference image disappears, like mine did, simply reopen it and click the pin icon to keep it visible. Now, let's add a new image layer for the golden parts of the sword. We'll use this layer for all the golden elements. In edit mode, select the cross guard by pressing L. Switch back to paint mode and enable the mask icon to hide all unselected parts. Now anything you do will only affect this part. Select the bucket tool, choose a yellow color and apply it. Then disable the mask icon to view the entire model again. To make the gold look realistic, click the drop down menu and enable metallic and roughness properties. Lower the roughness to give it a shiny metallic look. If the result isn't convincing, enable the override option under roughness and set the value to around 0.1 for better results. That's just one advantage of Yuka Paint. You have complete control over every layer's properties. Now in edit mode, press Alt A to unselect all, then pick other parts that should be in gold. Return to paint mode, enable the mask icon and apply the same yellow color. Now the gold is starting to shine. Create another layer for the crystal parts of the sword. In edit mode, select the areas that should have the crystal look, enable the mask, and then choose a color. But before you apply it, save the color in a palette for later use. Use the bucket tool to apply it. To make the crystal parts shiny, go to the drop down menu, enable metallic, roughness, and the override option, and reduce the roughness for that sparkling look. Don't forget to save your layers with Ctrl S. Now, let's add some golden strips to the sword. Create a new layer. Enable 32-bit float for more depth, as we'll also use the normal property. Select the yellow color again, enable metallic, roughness, and normal, then adjust the bump value for extra depth. If the paint doesn't wrap around the entire object, toggle the eraser to clean up the layer, then toggle back to the paintbrush. Under the Options tab, Uncheck Occlude and Backface Culling to paint on both sides. Disable Normal Fall Off to avoid gaps, and voila, the strips go all the way around. Now just paint the golden strips. You can also add these two options to your favorites to easily access them just by pressing Q. Let's make the cross guard look better by adding some spots on here. Now, let's finish with the blade. In edit mode, select this face loop and the side edges. Mask out the rest, and create a new image layer for the silver. Since we won't be using the normal property here, disable 32-bit float. Use the color picker to select white, use the bucket tool to apply it. Then remove the mask to see all the textures clearly. Enable metallic, roughness, and override for a sleek, shiny finish. Finally, let's add golden details to the blade. Go back to the gold layer, pick the yellow color from your saved palette, Reduce the brush size F and enable Stabilize Stroke for more control. Select the faces you want to detail and apply the mask. Paint in your golden details to make the sword pop, but don't overdo it 
keep it classy. Once you're happy with the result, it's time to bake the texture. Click the gear icon, then bake all channels. Increase the samples to four for better quality and hit OK. After baking, you see this, which shows that it's using the baked textures, but in the shading tab, there's still no texture. So click on this icon here and back to the shading tab. All the textures are connected correctly and ready to be used. You can use these steps to texture paint anything and create stunning assets. Lastly, to celebrate 1000 subscribers, I have a special treat for you. You can grab all the free assets from my store, plus get a 50% discount on paid assets. Just use the link in the description or the code THANKS1K at checkout. Enjoy your new assets, like the slash VFX that pairs perfectly with the sword we just textured. But hey, you might need to export it to a game engine like Unity, with all the textures set properly, so watch this next video, and I will see you there.